Fred, this has got to stop. <laughs> Gotta keep going. The benzyl carbonic isomer dilutes it. You'll ever make it to the border, Johnny? Do you hear me? I know why you're doing this, Fred, for Harry and Turner and everyone, and we all appreciate it, believe me. But your health is important, too. I won't have... Excuse me? Excuse me, Fred, but I thought I was talking here. Will you let me make my point? Yes, for that. Mi casa es tu casa. I know why you're doing this, Fred, for Harry and Turner and everyone. <laughs> Q-wave fluctuations are small enough so I can finally get some accurate readings. I'm close, Case. Bad close. And you're flirting with disaster. Even a J.J. Walker, with his schedule, insists on a good eight to nine hours sleep every night. I don't care. Hire an assistant. Casey, we've been over this. I don't want to have some stranger around all the time, down in the lab. He would bug me. I guess, as a scientist, I, I'm just a, a loner. A lone wolf. <laughs> El Lobo. Yeah, well, you know what? You get someone qualified. Someone who can, you know, clean your test tubes and combine whatever needs combining. It's the right move, Fred. Now, that would make me a boss. A suit, right? If only one assistant, Fred, you're not Lee Iacocca. Yeah, but then we get into the messy world of employer-employee relations. What? is a big deal. They come in, they work, you pay them. Yeah, but then one day they come in late and I have to dock their pay. Then they form a union. Then they go out on strike. Then I gotta bring in scab labor. Fred, if you can raise three children, you can handle one employee. Fred, trust me, it'll be fine. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, please state your name. Jonathan Cavell. Have you worked in a lab before? Nope. Do you have a background in science? No. Nope. Uh -huh. Did you graduate from high school? Uh, no. Nope. Do you think you even have a remote chance of getting this job? No. Nope. Do you have a dental plan? No. Let's say a situation arose where one of your employees required emergency dental care. Let's say for the sake of argument, I a root canal. <laughs> would your would your company cover that? Ah. Uh, so what you're saying is, if I got the job, I wouldn't be able to smoke in the lab. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're telling me that I cannot smoke in the lab. Yes, it's, it's dangerous. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to be sure I'm hearing you right. Uh, the smoking thing in the lab. I just want to understand your feeling. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. So sorry. There we are. <laughs> I gotta get that, uh, that tripod fixed. It's loose. My name is Julie Brooks. I see here on your resume you went to Columbia. Yes, I did my postdoctorate work there, concentrating mostly on kinetic resonance theory, with a special emphasis on molecular transfers in quasi-transitional states. Of course, that included polarized dipole van der Waal interaction. She's uh, fully versed in the Q-wave vibration system of the meteor. Uh, what do you think, Case? 
I think she can really help you. She's definitely qualified. Good. Actually, I was thinking of hiring her. What? Do you think I was going to say something because she's beautiful? I don't know. First of all, to not hire her because of her looks would be a kind of reverse discrimination, wouldn't it? And secondly, it'll be a professional relationship, so... Well, that settles it then. I'm gonna hire her. Okay, I'm gonna go down and get that uh, lab ready. It's kind of messy. Gina, Ike, you wanna give me a hand? Sure. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Look, Aunt Tidella, I didn't cross the line. You're drawing outside the lines. You're supposed to draw inside the lines. Why? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of laughing going on down there. What would they be laughing about? That's the third time you've said that in the last ten minutes. It's just co-workers working in a happy environment. Oh, no, no, I know, I know, I just... Wonder what, you know, could be that funny. Oh, hi, Case. Um, coming up to get a snack. We're just working straight through. So, Julie's working out okay? Oh, she's working out great. We're getting tons of work done. Is there any cheddar? Julie loves cheddar. No, I'm sorry, I forgot to get some. Yeah. Oh, well, that's life in a big mansion. <laughs> life in the big mansion. So, you guys seem to be having a lot of fun down there. <laughs> yeah, Julie told me a great joke. Oh, yeah, what? Uh, are there any tomatoes? Uh, no, we're all out. Oh. So, what's the joke? Oh, you wouldn't think it's funny. It's a science joke. No, no, I'd like to hear it. Well, you wouldn't find it that funny. Tell me the joke. Well, okay. Um, knock, knock. Who's there? Well, it might be Heisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get it? No. Heisenberg, you know, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? You can't predict both the position and velocity of a body in motion? <laughs> I knew you wouldn't get it. Oh. By the way, Casey, you were right. Julie's great. Good. Good. Well, it was one of my, one of my. I think you may have some mushrooms. Alpine. Filipovian. I know. He's always. He's always. Shouldn't someone be doing that for him? Alpine, Angela. You have the most wonderful children. Well, look, I can't take all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frederick, he's such a nut. Yeah, he's a barrel of laughs. <laughs> Why don't you tell everybody that joke, the uh, the knock knock joke? Tina, you're going to get this. Knock, knock. Who's there? Well, it might be Heisenberg. <laughs> you got that? No. <laughs> well, thanks. Another good day. We even got some work done. <laughs>
Yes. Got it? Yeah, it's gone now. Oh, well, uh, so, good night. Good night, Fred. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Watching AYN, the old yodeling network. And now back to the yodeling cop. Come on, come on. Acknowledge, acknowledge. Can you acknowledge? Oh, these stupid things that never work. <laughs> they gotta pin down, friend. We need reinforcements. What are we gonna do, man? Hold your ears. <laughs> What's shaking, sis? Oh, I couldn't sleep. Not like you. I never have a problem sleeping. Is there something wrong, Casey? No, really. It's just one of those sleepless nights. Have a cup of hot milk. That'll knock you right out. about Julie and Fred. I don't know. It's probably nothing. What are you talking about? Julie is perfect. Fred's never been happier. He's getting more work done. He's back to sleep in his regular 12 hours. <laughs> this girl's a miracle worker. And she ain't exactly hard on the papers, either. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe they're getting along a little too well. Is what I'm picking up on here that a certain person is feeling a little threatened re her relationship with the said person's spouse? No, 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 no. I know that Fred... Look, it's just the camaraderie of two people working closely together in a confined space, hour after hour, day after day, moment after moment. <laughs> End of story. I believe they call it simpatico. If it make you feel any better, maybe tomorrow, Harry could go down there and spy on him. No, don't be silly. Hey, I, I don't mind. <laughs> Tomorrow's garbage day, but, uh, there'll be other garbage days. <laughs> My own stupid little hang-ups, believe me, I'll get over it. Don't worry, sis. Harry Orca's on the job. Forget it, Harry. It's wrong. But I'm pumped! I'm jazzed! I'm juiced! <laughs> Fix any frame. Morning. Morning. Wow. <laughs> have you got enough aftershave on there, big guy? Uh, uh, well, um, I, I have to head down to the lab now. I'm... <laughs> big day today. Big day. Follow that hairdo. Harry! <laughs> Oh, hi, Casey. Hi. Listen, I haven't had a chance to thank you. Fred said you really pushed for me to get this job. Uh-huh. You know, I envy you. Fred's really special. But I'm sure you already know that. Uh-huh, yeah. Anyway, thanks very much. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, what's on the agenda today, Herr Doctor? Oh, well, why don't you continue monitoring that experiment we set up yesterday? Okay? Oh, hi. Oh, oh, pardon me. Excuse me. Oh. Uh, <laughs> pardon me. Sure. 
Okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, Frederick, you have to have a look at this. In other words, you have nothing to worry about. Nada. Mm. Boy, talk about no chemistry. Oh. I was hoping they'd do something just to kill the monotony. It's really, Harry? <laughs> How can we let this happen? <laughs> Getting erratic Q wave readings on the Boltzmann 3000. Oh, I think I see the problem. Oh! 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 oh. oh. <laughs> you okay? My hero. Ah! What? <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> Working. Really? Gee, I'm surprised you'd get anything done with your arms wrapped around each other all the time. Oh, she fell. I caught her. Look at you. All dressed up like the high school prom, smelling up the whole house. Do you think I like going through this trouble every day? I mean, you're the one that suggested I bring a stranger into the house. I... You're jealous! That's it, you're jealous! I can't believe you think that I'd even look at another woman when I've got someone like you. You know you're the only person in my life. I knew that from the first moment I saw you. Chained to that administration building, covered in red paint. <laughs> even though you said I was a brainwashed stooge of the corporate war machine, I... I thought, she's beautiful. And you were. You were the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. You know, I always regretted our first date. Why did I choose Mexican food? <laughs> then I had to go have a second helping of pinto beans. Talk about pressure. <laughs> I didn't want the dinner to be over. Why do you think we ended up down at the steel mill? You know, in case something happened. <laughs> there we were, looking at the smokestack spewing out all of those flames. And I kept saying how beautiful it was. And it was beautiful. Because I was with you. And I was the happiest guy in the whole world. Kim Basinger could walk in that door. And I wouldn't give her a second look if I had you sitting beside me. I love you. Kim Basinger, Fred. Well, maybe I went over the top with that one. <laughs> Julie just called. She's coming over to pick up her last check. That was really nice of you to help her get that new job. That yeah, was the least I could do. I mean, with the meteor flaring up again, there wasn't enough work for two people. So what exactly is she going to be doing in the Amazon? Measuring snakes or something. Apparently, they're shrinking. <laughs> uh, would you give this to her, Case? I don't think she should see me right now. She's probably going through a lot. Poor kid. Hi, Julie. Hi, Casey. Is Fred around? Ah, uh, he's downstairs working. Oh. 
Thank you. Well, I won't disturb him. He's such a great guy. I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, I'll tell him. You know something? I think you're a really nice person, and I wish you all the very best in the world. Thanks. I'm, well, it's not that I didn't think that you were a nice person before. It's just that I... Uh, um... Okay, see, I just... I got this idea in my head for some stupid reason that you and Fred, you know... <laughs> that you had a thing for Fred. <laughs> Kind of silly, huh? Uh huh. <clears throat> Casey, I'd um, I'd like to introduce you to my fiance, Rex. Oh. Rex. Hi. Hi. Oh, he's a tall one, isn't he? <laughs> Bye, Casey, and uh, say goodbye to Fred for me. Sure. <laughs> So, how'd she take it? Boy, I hope she can get over me. I think she will, Fred. You know, me, Eastwood, Costner, we all have that certain je ne sais quoi. What is it? It's not a do thing, it's a be thing. Am I getting to you, huh? Hey? Hey?